my 18th birthday, my younger sister gave me a journal as a gift with an inscription inside that said, to Jessica, if you don't make it as a talk show host, maybe you'll make it as a writer instead. Happy birthday. And I know what everyone in this room is thinking, and it wasn't my personality that squashed those dreams. <laughs> It was Geraldo Rivera and his live studio audience. I was obsessed with talk shows and had watched Rosie O'Donnell, Sally Jesse Raphael, Mari Povich, Geraldo, and they always say, for free tickets, send away to this address. So I would do that. I lived in Maryland, which was like four hours away from New York City. I got Geraldo tickets. I took off school and made my mother drive me up to New York. <laughs> and we were in the audience and they said, we need volunteers to be a part of today's show. And so I raised my hand and the theme of the show was women who date the wrong men. <laughs> so. I was desperate for attention, and I think Geraldo's producers were desperate for people who were desperate for attention. <laughs> because I was only 18 and had only dated two men, but I was technically a woman, and they both really were wrong for me. <laughs> but I guess it made for boring television because Geraldo started trying to pump up the drama by pouring on the pity. And he just kept saying, he's massaging my hand and he has this like, I think it's a Star of David tattoo like in the web of his thumb. That's all I could stare at the whole time. He's massaging my hand. This is on television. And saying, you poor girl, how are you ever gonna find a man? It was making me very uncomfortable also destroying my self-esteem <laughs> in front of everyone and I tried to loosen it up with a joke, a bad joke that just came out like a sad person instead. <laughs> I said, well, every guy I know seems to like girls with blonde hair, so maybe I'll just dye my hair blonde. Geraldo didn't get it. <laughs> the studio audience didn't get up. They turned on me and started shouting stuff. <laughs> One woman shouted, girl, don't ever change yourself for a man. Then my mother joined in. <laughs> and when I saw her standing, and her mother didn't even know she was my mother. She's just like this crazy Cuban woman and she was sitting there shaking her head. She didn't know I was joking either. And uh, he's like, you look like you got something to say. You look like you're mad. And then he gave her the microphone and she stood up and gave this like crazy monologue about women having honor and honoring themselves and loving themselves. And everyone applauded wildly. And uh, when it was over, we walked out and people kept telling me not to change myself for a man. That I shouldn't dye my hair blonde. And here we are almost 15 years later and I've learned nothing from that day in terms of standing up in front of people and humiliating myself. Thank you. Thank you.